if you want to get out from like if you want to break through if you want to go from this level to that level you can't be like okay I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tip my toes in the water I'm just gonna try it I'm just gonna see it I'm just gonna play around I'm just gonna do that's that's typical that's that's average man what's the journey man what's the journey how can you replicate it how can you apply some of those principles and ideas the number one thing that I can sincerely say that absolutely changed everything I worked on myself first period so here's the formula learn learn something new and then do it and implement it against all odds right against you know everything they persevered I didn't have to be that smart guy that's gonna go out and create all this tech stuff I had found all of these other hidden loopholes within the eBay system you know like like alternative ways to make money on eBay and they did it in this industry they did it in online marketing hey 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 everybody welcome back to the journey my name is Vic Strasius and as always I'm fired up I'm stoked about getting together with you again here for another episode uh, and uh, again as always you know if you're watching these journey uh, episodes and you kind of know what's going on right I get to dissect I get to you know kind of dig under go under the hood behind the curtain if you will uh, of some of the most successful people in our industry not just our industry but other industries as well and so uh, this particular episode I have none other than mr. Josh Herb Josh welcome Thanks, to the show brother so you're here in the studios of 4% studios yes uh, and we just uh, you know we just did some cool work on the SEO mastery that uh, which is one of your products here in, in, in the four uh, percent and uh, having this opportunity I wanted to get you on the show and talk with you a little bit about your journey yes you know so for those guys who, who, who don't know who Josh Earp is he, in, a, in a very very you know condensed version he is the man that teaches billionaires how to make more money <laughs> is that, fair? Is that yeah fair? yeah most so, you know, marketing uh, a marketing consultant to literally what multi billion uh, billionaires and you know TV personalities, celebrities. You want to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, exactly. So I'm a marketing consultant to multi billionaires, TV stars, and celebrities. And uh, you know, I definitely did not start out that way. I started out with small business and worked my way up, and you know, moved to Hollywood and then Beverly Hills, and just you know, started traveling and it got crazy from there. Um, but yeah, so the thing is, is, is I do teach billionaires how to make more billions. Um, and that might seem a little uh, counterintuitive, but the, the thing is, is that usually most billionaires, uh, you know, which 75% of them are involved in sales, which uh, we're going to talk about that in, in neuro-linguistic programming in a bit. But, uh, you know, most billionaires, they've made their money doing something other than the internet, uh, most older ones at least. And so what I am is an internet marketing specialist. I am uh, well-versed in search engine optimization, as you can see by our course here. Um, you know, the, much more than that, but basically, at its highest level, the 30,000 foot view, is they just don't have the internet figured out. And those that do, they just don't have it figured out as much as you know, other people out there. And so uh, guys like myself are able to consult with these huge companies and huge individuals and you know, TV stars and whatnot um, you know, because we have the knowledge of advertising. We have uh, the ability to broadcast their message and right. put it to the rest of the world. So we want to talk. Um, this is going to be an incredible episode, uh, you guys, because I want to I want to spend time, Josh, and, and just talk with you here candidly um, about uh, our industry, about marketing in general, sales, right, entrepreneurship, yes. uh, where the puck is going. You know, you like you like yeah. the term. You know, I, you know, you say that. You know, you like to you like to be. Uh, you have this ability to be able to see around the corner a little bit, right? What, what's what's coming up? I want to talk to you a little bit about that. I'll be definitely traffic. You know, maybe SEO world, all that stuff. So it's going to be impactful. Um, just value-packed uh, uh, episode here. Um, I've got my notes. Okay, get your notes. If you're watching this right now live, right, uh, go ahead and, and let us know if you're fired up about this. Make sure that you comment. You know, make sure that you engage with us here. You know, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you hit those hearts if you're watching this on Facebook. Um, let's uh, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Who's, let's do it. So, so how long ago did you get into you know doing what you're doing right now, business-wise, you know, marketing-wise? Yeah. So six or seven years ago, um, you know, I. I recognized that marketing was the king of, uh, or sorry, it was the, you know, it was the paramount uh, thing that I needed in my business to succeed because you can have the greatest product in the world, but if you don't have the right marketing, right. it doesn't mean much because content may be king, but marketing is queen and she runs the household. Mm -hmm. And so I understood that marketing was the key to success, which, you know, while we're on the topic, success is the progressive realization of a worthy idea or goal. And so, you know, I started out originally private labeling health supplements on Amazon and doing paid advertising and uh, whenever 
uh, my ad account got banned, I switched over to SEO because I didn't want to have to go through the pain and, and whatnot. And uh, then I found out that SEO actually had much uh, higher traffic. Um, you know, it was much cheaper, it, it converted much higher, it was more organic, it was much more long term, so I decided to focus on that. But initially, you know, it was really about that will and that determination, that desire to succeed because I knew that nobody was going to come to my house and change my life for me, you know, yeah, so, yeah. so it literally was up to me. And, um, and so it was really that determination, that desire, you know, to turn adversity into my opportunity. And so, um, you know, Napoleon Hill said in his, in his book, Think and Grow Rich, which more millionaires have been made off that one book than any other book in history. He said that, you know, although you may, uh, you know, refuse to take the leap of faith or not jump into entrepreneurialism, although if you choose not to jump, you may avoid the temporary depths of despair, but also you will never experience the exhilaration of success. And so what I decided to do was fail as fast as I can because like Henry Ford said, you know, if you want to succeed, you have to double your rate of failure. And so what I did is I recognized that you know, I was only as good as my greatest failure. And so I decided to just fail as fast as I can. You know, Thomas Edison also said, he who experiments the most wins. And so I literally ran experiment after experiment after experiment. Same thing with SEO, you know. I, I didn't believe what people were telling me. I believed what I tested. And so that's how I got started, is really that will and determination to turn adversity into opportunity. Don't believe what people tell you. Believe what you test. Yes, exactly. I love that. Kind of like Reagan said. He said, trust yet verify. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so, okay. Um, I got a million questions here for you. Uh, awesome. Josh, well, you hopefully know. I have at least but, one uh, answer. <laughs> uh, but uh, but the way we're gonna do this is I want I want it to be very okay. So let's let's start let's start from the beginning, right? What, yeah. Why SEO, dude? Why why not like you know media buying or, or anything like that? So yeah. when, you, when you did that private label supplement, right? On Amazon, you started pushing sales. Did you do it through SEO at that at that time, or did you um, do no? I didn't. I did it through uh, Google AdWords. Okay, and, so you started um, with Google AdWords. Yeah, and then I got my account banned okay. uh, because they didn't like selling supplements and they just like to ban you for whatever reason and not give you much of an explanation. And so, uh, you know, so I decided to go into SEO. But, uh, you know, the thing was is the reason why I learned SEO as opposed to anything else is because I knew it was the future. I knew it was the future of marketing. And Google holds all the world's information. And if I could control the world's information, I can control what people buy and what people see, you know. And so it was just one of those funny things because um, I actually, you know, got hired to do SEO. So there was uh, my mother's cousin, Jeffrey Cooper, who's business partners with Hunter Biden, which uh, is Joe Biden's son, if, if you know, studied politics at all, which I'm not really heavily involved in politics. I just, you know, happened to get hired by these individuals and uh, to learn SEO. And so I got really good at doing it for their casino because they made me a director of marketing for a multi-million dollar casino called Ocho. And uh, so what I just started that out of the, 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 the situation that you got put into. Yeah. Did you commit and then figure out? How yes, to I commit first and I figure the rest oh out later. Goodness, and and like the thing is, because like Richard Branson said, yeah. he said, if you're presented with a wonderful opportunity and you don't know how to do something, right, 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 you right. say yes and you figure it out along right. the way. How many people do it? How many people are watching <laughs> this right now, right? How many people do you know? How many people do both know that they're trying to figure everything out? Oh, man. I know people still trying to figure it out, you know? And, and that ties in with perfectionism. Because the thing is, is procrastination and perfectionism will both steal your profit. Yeah. Everybody thinks it has to be perfect, but let me tell you guys something, done beats perfect every time. In fact, uh, I, I call it the, window, the Microsoft Windows analogy. Yeah. All right, so with Microsoft Windows, you know, if they would have waited till their software was perfect to release it to the market, right, right. we wouldn't even have Windows to this day because it's still not perfect. So the whole thing is done beats perfect every time. You need to, uh, you know, literally, uh, double your rate of failure if you'd like to succeed and just release it just get it out there and let the market tell you what's right and what's wrong and fix it along the way learn it along the way you know the definition of an entrepreneur is jumping out of the airplane and assembling the parachute on the way down yeah yeah which and most so, people are not willing to do yeah which which yeah, I got really scary. good at assembling the parachute on the way down because I had to and that brings me to my next topic is we must meet our must you know we don't get what we what we want if we got what we wanted we'd already have what we wanted if we could do it all by ourselves we'd already be there as well so teamwork makes the dream work. And Bill Gates said, I never do anything alone. You know? And so the thing to remember here is that uh, you, know, you really just have to take your obstacles and turn them into your opportunities. And don't be, uh, number one, don't procrastinate, but also don't try to be perfect because nothing's ever going to be perfect. And if you try to uh, too much, you're just going to waste time. You know? So you start out, you, know, you got put, we put in a situation where you had to learn SEO. And you go out there and you learn SEO. 
um, trial and error? Did you did you learn from somebody else? Did you you know how did how did how, walk me through that through that first set of successes of yours? Yeah. So and maybe some of the failures that you had or some of the mistakes that you that you did. Exactly. So the first thing was, you know, I basically tried to learn as much as I could. Um, so I took courses. I I you know sought out mentors. I went to conferences. I read books. I went online. I watched videos. You know. So literally, there was no right or wrong place to learn, and um, you know because there's no such thing as good or bad knowledge. It's just what you do with it, most of the time. Um, now, in the internet marketing industry, it's a little different. You know, you might come across some inaccurate information, but my whole goal was to sift out all of that inaccurate information and, and only be left with what's actually working, which brings us to the the SEO mastery. But uh, but yeah, so you you really do have to commit first and figure the rest out later. There's so many people that think that. Um, that you have to figure it out, and and also it's about the feedback. You know, people are always in the the feedback loop of constantly learning, but without taking action. You know, and I, I you know a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's the law of attraction. If I just want something bad enough, it'll come true. Well, um, you know, which is funny because I, I was just on television with Brian Tracy, and uh, Rhonda Burns, who wrote the book The Secret, actually attended a Brian Tracy seminar where Brian Tracy outlined several uh, universal laws, not just one. Um, you know, such as the law of association, etc., and uh, the law of attraction was one of those laws. And so Rhonda Burns went home after attending one of his conferences and took, picked one of those laws that Brian was uh, talking about, and um, you know, pretty much ran with it and created the law of attraction, and uh, or the secret they call it now. And uh, the thing you have to remember is it's all great and all, but um, you know, it's not really the law of attraction; it's the law of take action, because ultimately that's going to get through the result. The law of take action. So you're selling, you know, um, you Google bans you from Google AdWords. You go into into your SEO. Um, what are you, okay? So what's what's the program? Walk, walk me through that journey. Right. How did you get to? Because right. you know you you work, I mean, you work with people that are literally like world top producers and you know influencers and world class you know yeah. businessmen. <laughs> yes. You know how do, how does one go from beginning from learning figuring this out right and now you get hired by yeah movie stars. Yeah. So. You know, that brings me back to the point that we were talking about earlier. Um, you always do what you have to do. You don't always do what you'd like to do. And that's, I want to say that again because it's so, so important. You don't always do what you'd like to do, but you always do what you have to do. And so uh, we don't always get what we want. We get what we need. You know, if we, ha- if we always got what we wanted, then we'd already have what we want. But we always get what we need, right? And um, so if we raise the bar, I just knew initially during my journey at the beginning that if I raise the bar of what I expected for myself, if I you know, expected more of myself and made success a must instead of a want, then I would get there. And so that's exactly what I did because I literally had my back against the wall. You know, whenever I actually uh, quit the casino, uh, you know, it's funny because I went off on my own to do it and you know, there wasn't really a safety net underneath me. I had no one to catch me. You know, my back was theoretically against the wall. And so whenever your back is against the wall, that's when you make things happen. But whenever you uh, like to you know, be successful, sometimes it doesn't always happen. Because you can't tiptoe your way to success. You, know, you have to uh, you know, blunt force trauma. Were you, were you, what was your inspiration? What was your pull? Was that, like, how does one, because I know some people, you know, some people have challenges with like, okay, how do I raise that standard? You know, yeah. how, how do I get myself to, 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 to be pulled? Or how do I give myself that, that, that next level life? You know that will pull me, right? Because if you're comfortable, if somebody's working, you know, nine to five, or maybe they're just, you know, making an extra couple a couple thousand bucks online per month, they might be in that comfort zone. Yeah. What's the trick? What was the trick for you to set yourself a, a you know, a standard to be like, dude, I want to be, I want to work with the top of the top of the top. Yeah. And how did you? That reminds me of a stick to it. That reminds me of a of a quote actually by Tony Robbins, which uh, we teach Frank Kern, who is. Uh, you know, we teach them advanced neurolinguistic programming and search engine optimization for sales and things. Um, and he does Tony Robbins marketing, but there's a wonderful Tony Robbins quote that says, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. And so, uh, you, you know, comfortability is, is one of the biggest dream killers, you know, and doubt will kill more dreams than failure ever will. But comfortability really is the enemy, kind of like how ego is the enemy. You know, ego is not your amigo, is what I always say. Ah. Um, but, uh, you know, it really is just about, you know, recognizing that life does begin at the end of your comfort zone. And so if you're comfortable, if you're always doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting the same result over and over. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And so I knew if I wanted um, to have different results, I needed to change 
what I was doing. And like Warren Buffett said, which our good friend uh, Steve Rogers, who's uh, the former CEO for Warren Buffett, um, he said that, that somebody's sitting in the shade today because somebody planted a tree a long time ago. Right, right, right. You know? And he also said that uh, there's two rules to making money, you know, according to Warren Buffett. And number one is never lose money. Hmm. And number two is never lose money. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. There's, a, there's another two, actually, that he, that he gave me. Um, and that was, number one, determine the ideal person that you would like to invest in. And number two is become that person. And so that's what I wanted to do because originally I was just going to hire someone to do my SEO and this and that, which I knew SEO was the secret. My whole life I've used Google. You know, my whole life I was typing in things and learning things, but I had no idea about SEO. I had no idea that, I, that somebody was out there controlling what I was seeing, you know? And so, I mean, it, kind of imagine it like a television. Imagine like, uh, you know, you can flip on it, uh, or there's a television in every single room in every single house, and you have the ability to, to broadcast what people are seeing, you know? So, so there's obvious other ways that you can use SEO, like to you know, in, uh, persuade individuals to going maybe one, or, one way or the other for a political party during a presidential election, et cetera. I mean, there's so many uses for it, it's, it's retarded. Um, but I knew SEO was, was this, you know, the key ingredient because if I could rank on the first page of Google, I could dominate any market I wanted, you know, because it's just so much traffic. And so that's kind of why I did it, and I stayed committed to it because um, you know, I made it my one thing. You know, Gary Keller wrote about the book, The One Thing. Yep. And uh, you know, he said, if you try to catch two rabbits, you'll end up catching neither one. And so a lot of the time, a lot of the mistakes I see people make is that they're so scattered. They're, they're literally so scattered, they're a mile wide but only an inch deep. And they wonder why they never get anywhere. It's because where focus goes, energy flows. Bruce Lee said that a warrior is an average man with laser-like focus. And so, you know, that's what I did because whatever you focus on expands. And so SEO became what I, you know, basically lived. What would you, I mean, what's your take on, you know, if somebody, uh, if, if somebody's just like, okay, what do I want to do? You know, I, I want to make this marketing work. What would you, would you, would you recommend going wide? Would you recommend something like you did? Go laser focus and yeah. go deep into a, a particular. Maybe like what I would do is go wide initially to get your feet wet and see what you might enjoy or what you might what might be the most profitable, but it's, you know, definitely don't waste too much time. As soon as you find one thing, uh, just go after it. You know? So try a little bit of everything and then just make your decision, but don't let it take too long. You know, Jim Rohn said, Tony Robbins' mentor, he said, you must learn from failure. Yeah. Just don't let it take too long. Right, right, you right. Know? And so same thing here, don't let it take too long. So if you go wide, right, there is, there is, for, let's talk about traffic generation, for example. Yes. Because you, 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 know, you, you get approached <laughs> by companies with like $100 million budgets <laughs> plus you know, to run their thing. So they could be doing media buys, they could be doing a whole bunch of different things, right? Mm -hmm. um, as a marketer, what's important? As, as somebody who, you know, who wants to channel masses, right? Who wants yes. to channel attention, who wants to command attention. Uh, what, what's important? I know you and I, we talked about, you know, you know off camera, we talked about yeah. where the, the puck is going, the, the whole Gretzky approach, right? Where the puck is going, and, you're, and you added to that, you're like, you know, I want to be able to see around the corner. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. So the thing is, is we must always keep you know, in mind the future, because um, SEO is, is kind of a longer term process, so it does take quite a few months to fully rank. Um, but the thing to remember is that those months are going to pass by anyway. So you might as well be dominating your market by the end of the time anyway. And so, you know, there's something to be said about that, about kind of just looking into the future and just peering. You know, there's an ancient occultic uh, esoteric science known as divination or scrying, which is where you peer into a reflective surface and this and that. You know, so I was always interested in kind of things like that. But, but long story short, you know, you must, you know, visualize yourself already being there. Now, it's funny you mention that uh, because I want to talk to you guys a little bit about counterfactual simulation. And so it's the basis in all success. Mm -hmm. So counterfactual simulation is very, very simple. Um, you know, in fact, it's the basis in which all science fiction is written. And it all starts like this. What would it look like if blank? Okay? So it's asking yourself the question, seeding yourself that question, and then your mind will automatically fill in the gaps. Okay? So in science fiction, they would say something like, what would it look like if blank or what would it look like if something crazy happened and then their brain will automatically create and envision the scenario and then they just start writing right so that's the basis in all science fiction now with success which is the progressive realization of a worthy idea or goal uh, we must utilize these you know this this 
uh, for lack of a better word, this uh, skill of counterfactual simulation to apply it towards success. So we must be like the author Stephen Covey says in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, that we must begin with the end in mind. We must visualize that we are already there. Right. Okay, so if you say, what would it look like if I became successful? Or what would it, you know, let's actually do an experiment for, for yourself and everybody watching at home. So if I were to ask you and everyone at home right now, if I said, you know, what would it look like if you were standing on the moon and you looked around you? What would that look like? Right? right. Do you see how you're... Right. So your mind goes into yeah. this like ima so imaginary like possibility. Exactly. Your brain just immediately, and I'm sure even those of you at home just started, you know, configuring that mental image. That's called counterfactual simulation. So with success, you must see the goal. You must imagine yourself already there and what you'd like to accomplish and then reverse engineer the steps to get you there that your brain will do automatically due to counterfactual simulation. So whenever you become aware of that, it's very, very useful. Are you big on goal writing? <laughs> yeah, I think that writing down your goals is very important. Vision boards, and are you into, are you, are you, yes. you, do you think that's important? Yes, I do, because, because it, transpire, it transmutes from the metaphysical to the physical. Mm -hmm. And so um, and there's a wonderful chapter on that written in the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill called The, uh, the Mystery of Sex Transmutation, which is a little different topic in and of itself. But uh, to transmute something, you know, to transfer it, you know, writing down your goals is so important. You know, Harvard did a study that, um, you know, over 90%, I believe, of individuals who wrote down their goals ended up achieving them within a specific time period. And so the reason why is because um, you know, it all has to do with auto-suggestion in the subconscious mind because I was a hypnotist. Speaking of the journey, um, you know, I started out as a stage hypnotist. It's not exactly everybody's uh, you know, go-to job, right? Right, right, right? You don't exactly right. meet a stage hypnotist uh, every single day. And so, um, so you know, that, that obviously helped me when it came to sales and other things you know, later on, just being able to communicate and things like that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so you, you really just have to utilize those concepts and, um, and hopefully that, that helps a little bit. Yeah. Let's talk about, um, currently what's happening in the marketplace right now, right? So we've got Facebook bought out, you know, Instagram and they're blowing that platform up like crazy right now. Oh, Instagram yeah. is going nuts. Yeah, it right? is. Everybody's jumping on that. <laughs> that creates opportunities in other areas as well. And everybody, like, do, do, do you think it's important for people to stand a current trends, like what's happening, like jump on those bandwagons on the latest and greatest technologies and what's happening in the world? Yeah, I mean, like, um, you know, you don't want to be the first one in, but you also don't want to be the last one in either. And so I definitely recommend taking advantage of current opportunities, but also planning for the long-term sustainability of your future and seeing, you know, around that corner. So I do recommend that you, you know, do that, but I also recommend that, um, that you look towards the future as well, because that's going to be extremely important. And um, you know, hopefully that answers that question. So what, what's going to happen? Like, everybody's like jumping in a, band, in a bandwagon of like yeah. social, right? Yes. Uh, which is awesome. You know, obviously we, we, we teach all that stuff. You know, in, in from the four percent, which you know, we put out the most potent, most current, most relevant, most cutting edge information that's out there. Okay. And you're saying you want to look around the corner. What's around the corner? What do we yeah. So as and we were talking about this earlier. So as retail is consistently dropping, and all these investors are taking their money away from from retail and withdrawing their money, uh, they're going to be incorporating it into paid advertising in Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all this stuff. They're going to be doing massive paid advertising, and those low cost per clicks that we're getting now are going to continuously rise and go up through the roof as more as the market gets more saturated. And so as that begin. Uh, begins to happening, I've already began planning for the future. You know, I've already positioned myself in such an evergreen position in the semantic web and just in SEO in general that uh, by the time everybody's um, you know trying to bend over to pick up pennies, I'm already going to be you know laughing my way to the bank. So uh, because um, you know you just have to think ahead. You know you have to be smart because being stupid is very expensive. Being stupid is very expensive. Write that one down. Huh? I like that. Hey, you enjoy, you enjoying this? Let, let us know. Let us know in the comments. Um, give, me, give me that heart. Give me that heart if you like this kind of stuff. This is some of these ideas are, are not like your, your your 101 elementary stuff. I mean, some of these things that if you really ponder, you know, just really think about this, right? Your mind just like imagine you're standing on the moon. What, what what are the possibilities? Yes. You know, what's the possibility right now if somebody like Instagram is blowing up and we have the, the we we just launched out a course, uh, you know, Insta Insta Traffic Mastery. Um, Fantastic, right? Teaches people how to dominate Instagram. Um, so that's a trend, that's a wave that's happening right now. Yes. But waves going like this. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So as an entrepreneur, you've got to be on the cutting edge, but you also have to be like SEO. Do you see this, this yes. thing going away? Now, here's the thing SEO not only is the future, 
it is also the very present. So as you're mentioning Instagram blowing up and paid advertising with Facebook, guess what? Google is a company that does exist and people are going there every single day. They process over 1.1 billion searches a month. So although that we, those of you watching at home, I know that we're talking about Instagram and positioning for the future with SEO, but we have to also understand that the SEO is happening right now. It is one of the biggest trends in the entire world. Let me just ask you a question. When was the last time you used Google? Oh, yeah, this morning. Literally, right? <laughs> and uh, let me ask you guys a question at home. When was the last time you used Google? Right. right? I'm sure it was, you might have even used Google to find this uh, video. You know? Right, right. Um, so, what I'm trying to say is that I know that Vic and I here are talking about future pacing and, and just you know also the future, but also we just want to let you know right now that the market is wide open and everyone is going to Google. The days of the phone book are over, and just as much as Instagram and all this is a trend, uh, Google is almost you know the same level, if not even higher, of a trend because it's one of the world's biggest companies and it's growing so incredibly fast. And it, they trust that for the information. So although they may see you on Instagram, they might see you on Twitter, guess what they're going to do? They're going to trust yet verify. They're going to go to Google and they're going to type in things about the, uh, you know, the product or service or whatever. And uh, you know, ultimately, if you're not on the first page of Google, so, so the, obviously there's a benefit of that you're going to make so much money off of it, right? Obviously. Uh, that that's, goes without saying. I mean, you can just do, put two and two together. If I sell a health supplement and I rank number one for the term health supplement, then you know, it doesn't take too much of a rocket scientist, thank God, to figure that out or else I'd be out of a job. Um, but <laughs> what I was going to say is that it is something that is very real and that is happening right now. And it's one of the biggest trends right now. All you have to do is ask yourself, when was the last time that you used Google? And I should tell you the answer to that question. Yeah, I love it. So it's mastering current. Like a lot of people are like, dude, what, like, what, well, how do I get, how do I get tried? How do I do this thing? Right. And, and it's, it's the, it's the, it's the thing that, that's staring them right in the face. Oh, like now. every single day, you know, and. And the funny thing is it's, it's hidden right under your nose. You know? yeah. it's, it's those things that, uh, you know, it's hidden in plain sight. It's the 800 pound gorilla sitting in the room and nobody can notice. If I have a product, Josh, if I have a product, right, or if I'm an affiliate for the product, or if I'm a consultant to uh, a, no, a local company here, right, in town, yeah. or if I wanted to be a consultant to a local company now, right? Yeah. So, and, and my question is, okay, how do I get traffic, right? So I can go and I can depend on somebody to send me traffic, or yes. I can just master a particular traffic source. Well, exactly. in your case, you decided to master SEO. Yes. Right. And by the way, you guys, for full transparency, we have SEO mastery. It's part of the one of the products in our uh, on our marketplace from the four percent because this is the cream of the crop type of stuff, right? And we cannot be ignoring this kind of kind of stuff because like it's like people are, yeah. are struggling for traffic generation. But if you just take the time to master, like currently, how how can you focus? How can you control your traffic now? How can you dig your own well? Yeah. of fresh water to drink out of so that way you never have to depend on anybody to give you water, right? You just go through your own thing and you just get yeah. as much as you, you, don't, as you yeah, can. Yeah, you, you own the, the, the water bottling facility. Exactly. So you don't have to, exactly. you know, you're the one saying But at the same time, at the same time, as you're doing this, right, you, you know, you, you look at too what, what, the, what the trends are doing, yes. right? So what's the industry doing? What's the, what companies like Google are doing? Yes. You know, what, what, what is Facebook doing? What's Amazon doing? You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Love it, man. Talk about the, uh, there's a fallacy going on that people think that, you know what, for me, a lot of people don't go into the mastery of SEO because they think that I need to be a product owner yes. to be able to promote on SEO. Like, and I, I cannot be endorsing other products through the SEO strategies. Um, you want to tackle that one? Yeah, so with SEO, you can promote anything, whether it's your product or your grandmother's product or even her grandmother's product that she's, you know, deceased and for whatever reason, it's still around. <laughs> Right, I, I, I always tell people I don't even care if they're, they're selling underwater uh, instructional VHS tapes on, uh, on underwater basket weaving, right? It just doesn't even matter what you're selling. Uh, you can you know, rank a website that's a review about a certain product. Uh, a, you know, it could be a review about a certain uh, you know, service, etc. And then once you rank that, you can put an affiliate link that if they want to learn more, they can click it and then go buy the product, etc. So you can do almost anything. So we've talked about the benefits of SEO, how you can sell any product, whether it's yours, especially if you're an affiliate. I mean, literally, for you guys affiliates watching this, if you are you know, one of the few that hop onto SEO that are, that are actually smart to take action on this stuff, you are going to be so incredibly well off, not just you know, in the near future, but, uh, or in the present, but also in the very near and distant future as well. Um, so the thing is, is, so we talked about the benefits of SEO. We talked about how you can do it um, as an affiliate. We talked about how you can do it uh, for video, how to do it for e-commerce sites like Amazon. We teach you how to rank your Amazon listing and Shopify stores, all that stuff, which, by the way, nobody in, in the e-commerce business is doing right now. They're all doing paid ads. Um, so you're going to have that advantage. 
Um, and plus, the traffic is just so much cheaper. You know, it's literally you're paying an arm and a leg for these clicks. SEO, it's you know, it's just ridiculously cheap, almost not even free. Yeah. So some people call it free traffic because after a while, it literally ends up making so much money. It's pretty much free. Um, but you know, so that's the benefits of it. Um, so it's higher ROI, uh, much higher conversion rate, um, much more long-term sustainable, much cheaper. Right. I mean, what what more could you ask? Now, so those are the benefits. Now let's talk about not doing it. Okay. So let's talk about not doing SEO for a second. So number one, uh, yeah, and also another benefit is it makes your company worth a lot more money. Because like I said in an earlier video, uh, I'm an investor myself, and we are part of a private equity group. So we buy, grow, and sell businesses. And one of the things we look at is, is this business on the first page of Google? If it is, it exponentially increases the price of the site when you go to sell it. If not, then you know it's, it is what it is. Um, but you know the, the penalty, as we'll call it, for not doing it is that you're competing on the same ground as your competitor. You know, you're, you're fighting arm and, arm and leg over uh, the cost per click. And um, so it's much more saturated. And also by not doing it, you're losing money to your competitors. Right? So I'm sure, Vic, you, you of all people could, could tell us, you know, losing money is definitely not a good thing. But to your competitors, yeah. right? that's a whole other story. What would you say about that? Well, uh, not not fun. Uh, yeah. not fun. <laughs> Two words, not fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't don't lose money to competitors. Yeah. And I didn't. Look, I, I'll be totally, up, you know, transparent with you and everybody else over here as well. I've been in the game for 13 years, you know, and I did not really look at SEO from an angle that you're looking at SEO from. Like, awesome. like I was just like chasing, you know, the the the, the, the low hanging fruit type traffic, yeah. right? Which did okay, but that always led you to depend on somebody or something, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, and so there was never like a, like a grounded, like a, like a nice foundational, yeah. you know, net, right? That you I could just like continually just like you send me traffic on an ongoing basis because I can, I can have this net called SEO, which is right now we're mastering, I'm, you know, I'm mastering this topic myself as well, you know, get into this. Third, I wish I had this information when I was getting started. Oh, yeah. I mean, can you imagine the base oh, I would man. have right now? I wish right? that Nobody I Nobody could penetrate that thing. I wish I had this information in the course whenever I first got started because I, yeah. I saved myself so many years. I mean, uh, it's so much time and money. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. You know? and, so. even, even, and, and even those, you know, you know those, those big gurus out there on the internet right now, a lot of these guys have no clue about stuff like this. Yeah, exactly. Right? They're just going after the, you know, the latest gimmick or whatever, the, the short-term, you know, uh, flesh-in-a-pen type, you know, method yeah. that can work today, but then, you know, yes. you can get banned tomorrow or something like that. The stuff that you teach and the stuff that you do, um, is that black hat, is that white hat? I guess it's a, <laughs> it's a blunt question. But talk about the importance of, of being white hat, because I know yeah. your stuff is white hat, because otherwise billionaires would hire you. Yes, exactly. Uh, Talk, talk about that because there's a lot of confusion going on in the marketplace. People think, well, I can go bend some rules, right? But that can actually backfire if you're not. Yeah. So what we do is we reverse engineer Google's patents. So it's not a, a matter of if Google likes it or not. This is just what they're saying within their patents, you know? And so the reason why most people aren't successful with SEO is because they're relying on what somebody told them to do. They're relying on, you know, possibly some course or some... Uh, you know, external force, et cetera, and they don't reverse engineer the patents. So if you want to pass a math test, it might help if you're reading from the right textbook, right? Well, they're reading from the science book, and then they're going and taking a social studies test, you know? And so it just doesn't add up. So what we decided to do with our course is we decided to reverse engineer the patents for you and figure out the algorithm, which consists of over 200 separately coded equations, and be like Michelangelo and see the angel in the marble and carve everything else away and only give you what matters, not give you a whole bunch of uh, videos to inflate the price and give it a higher uh, perceived value. We want it to be as quick, as short, as concise as possible to get you the action in, in, that you need so that you can, or the information you need so that you can go and take action on it instead of just watching all these videos and this and that. There's some other SEO courses out there that, that literally there's so many freaking videos and they're so out of order. I mean, you just go through them and your head spins. This is very step-by-step, -step. I mean, so easy that uh, you know, your grandmother could do it. You yeah, know, yeah, love it. Um, what were some of the biggest mistakes that you've made, Josh, over the years? The biggest mistakes that I made was you know, focusing too much on learning and not enough on doing. So the more you learn, the more you earn. But at the same time, you know, average people have great ideas, but legends have great execution. So one of my biggest mistakes was not taking action fast enough. You know, I would take this course, and I would take another course, and I would do this, and I would do that. 
Um, but in reality, it ended up hurting me. You know, it ended up biting me pretty hard. So, um, you know, it wasn't until I made that transition, you know, to taking action, because it's so easy to get caught in that feedback loop of just learn, 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 learn. And in fact, that's what most people do, and they get this temporary, you know, high that makes them feel like they're doing something when in reality they're they're actually not. You know, yeah. and so you know that was one of the biggest mistakes that I ever made was was not taking enough action fast enough. You know, I always felt like there was something else I had to learn and this and that. Um, another mistake that I made was uh, not focusing on sales enough in the beginning, um, because if you learn SEO, you know, SEO does take quite a few months to rank. And um, you know, if you just plan on making your, your money off just doing SEO, although you, you certainly can, um, it's just going to take a little bit more time, you know, because it's a more long-term approach. That's why we recommend paid traffic while you're building out the SEO, because the, the time is going to pass anyway, so you might as well be ranked organically. Yes, exactly. And it also um, uh, you know, sets you up for a much higher position uh, to negotiate for equity. So one of the things that we also do is we you know, negotiate percentages of equity or percentage of gross revenue or profit sharing, et cetera, um, you know, from the products and services that we do for SEO. We also teach you how to get clients. So I would, you know, for mistakes, I would have uh, definitely took, you know, taken action a lot faster. And number two, I would have focused more on sales and, you know, just getting money coming in while building out other things. Money cures a lot of problems. Yes, it does. You know, sales it, is money a bad thing? Well, it's only as evil as the hand that holds it, you know. So if you're if you're a yeah if you're a great person, then it's going to make you a greater person. If you're an evil person, it's going to make you more evil, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, do you believe that money is an idea, or is that difficult to get money? Um, well, I think money is an idea that is put forth to action. Okay, so I don't think it's an idea because if it was an idea, you know, then uh, you know everyone would be rich, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's an idea that's put forth to action. They don't have a lack of money. They have lack of an idea put forth to action. There's lots of ideas with no action. They're just that, just ideas. Yeah. Well, they say, they say that an, an idea without action is a wet dream. Yeah. And they say that action without the idea is a nightmare. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Love it, man. Um, what were you... Okay, you're working with all these mega... Celebrities and TV people and you know billionaires, uh, literally, yes. right? Um, what what are some of the mistakes that you see them perhaps are making from your being like a third party consultant to those companies? Yeah, so you know probably thinking that they already have the best people in the entire world already working for them. They think, oh, since I'm the biggest company in the world, I've already got the best SEO or I've already got the best sales team. You know, the thing is, there's the main thing they mess up on is recognizing that there's always room for improvement. You know, and so, uh, you know, sometimes some of them, you know, obviously the huge stars, like some of the biggest ones in the world, they just get let ego get to them. That's why we said in a, in a different video, the ego is the enemy. Ego is not your amigo. And with that being said, that is, you know, something that's very, very important. Um, so, you know, another mistake that I would see them making is, you know, they, you know, even though they have a lot of money, they still try to be, um, you know, tight on budget for whatever reason. Um, and I always tell them, you know, look, that's great and all, but uh, you can't expect to, uh, you know, risk your multi-million dollar business or billion, multi-billion in most cases dollar business in the hands of someone prepared to work for less than a McDonald's employee, you know, or roughly around that. And so, you know, I always tell them that if they think hiring an, you know, if they think hiring an expert is expensive, wait till they hire an amateur. You know, then they're going to really learn what expensive yeah, is because yeah. so, being so stupid good. is very expensive. So get the best, go for the best, be yeah. the best, and don't forget there that that person. You know, there there could be another level. Yes, there's right? always never, somebody. Never there's settle. always somebody better. Never settle. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, love it, man. So if somebody is getting started, right, Josh? Um, if you could give them your, you know, hey, man, one, two, three, just like yes. here is my best advice to you, yes. right, in three steps or three. Uh, uh, secrets or, or, or yes. top three things that you have, top three recommendations or uh, yes what would that be I've got it I got a perfect answer and, and man do I wish I could have told myself this when I got started you know unfortunately that's not the way it works but uh, yeah but maybe when we develop a time machine then that'll be a different course or a different <laughs> journey video um, so the the best three things I could teach you is number one obtain specialized knowledge I hate to keep uh, mentioning uh, Think and Grow Rich, but there's a whole chapter. You know, more millionaires have been made off reading that one book than any other book in history. And there's a whole chapter in that book dedicated to specialized knowledge because, um, you know, generalists fail 
but specialists win. Yeah. Okay, so always remember that. Because where a lot of people go wrong is they try to be all things to all people. Yeah. You know? And so well, the, the first thing was obtain specialized knowledge. Okay? It has to be specialized. Number two is consult with individuals once you have obtained that specialized knowledge. Because even if you don't have the, um, you know, the skills to get you there, or sorry, if you don't have the resources to get you there, you at least have the knowledge. And so once you obtain the knowledge, you can go and consult with individuals that, you know, for money to help them get where they want to be, and then you will in return uh, receive some money. I've even told some of my highest paying clients, I say, you know, I'll sit... I'll just sit right next to him, just like I am you, and I'll nonchalantly, you know, I'll sit there just like this, and I'll say, I'll say, you know, uh, when a person with experience meets a person with money, the person with experience ends up getting the money. Right, right, right. right. And I just look at him just like this, <laughs> and, and you know what's funny is they they ended up giving me a lot yeah, of money. Yeah. And so you know that's the thing you got to understand, and um, you know, so so number one is specialized knowledge. Number two is consulting. Right. This is the fastest way, and then number three is also obtaining clients that you can perform the service for, or that knowledge for, whether it be traffic or affiliate marketing or whatever it is. And then once you start to build your dreams, how do you get what you want out of life, right? You help enough other people get what they want. And so by helping them build their dream, you can then use some of the resources that you make to build your dream. So specialized knowledge, consulting, and clients. And then from that point, once you have the resources, once you have the capital, once you've helped enough other people get what they want, then you can start to make strategic decisions saying, okay, I have X amount of money. How should I diversify my assets? You know, how should I um, go about investing into this new opportunity? What are the trends? What, what can I take advantage of now and also later? You know? yeah. And um, you know, is it an asset or is it a liability? Is it something, am I building someone else's brand or am I building my own? And so really, those are the top three things, I would say. And so when you say obtaining clients, that could be, <clears throat> dude, if I'm, a, if I'm a marketer, if I'm an entrepreneur online yeah. doing what I'm doing, I'm building a list, you know, yeah. those prospects, that can be put in that category. Oh, yeah. so serve them with a specialized knowledge. Be known for something, have a stake in the ground, yeah. right? Be the best at something. Don't be generalist, don't, don't go super wide, but go you yeah. know, laser focus and, and, and become. I, there is a saying that, we, that, that I keep saying inside of the 4% and what we do here with our vision is, you know, don't, um, you know, you, you don't want to, you don't want to become somebody who's going to be very easy to replace. Yes. Right. You want to become somebody who's going to be very difficult to replace. Like in your case, right. You get paid the amount of money you get paid because it's very difficult to replace Josh Sharp. Yeah. And, uh, in one of the 48 laws of power, uh, he said, you must learn how to keep people dependent on you. Mm. He also said, always say less than necessary. And he also said, um, to, uh, you know, always win through actions, never through words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. very powerful stuff, guys. Yeah, very, very deep stuff, too. Very deep <laughs> stuff, you guys. Um, all right, everybody. So look, Josh, I appreciate you, man. We're going we're gonna to cut this. Um, you guys, hopefully you, you're enjoying this, right? Good stuff. Deep stuff. Think about this. Um, Josh, we have your stuff, obviously, in the 4% that's coming up. We'll do more webinars with you. Yes. Um, you you'll, you'll be able to teach this kind of stuff in more detail. Uh, to people, if you're fired up about this, hey, let me know. You know, let me know what your what your challenge in the business right now is. Okay, so we're gonna review the. You know, if you're watching this on Facebook, we're streaming live. You know, let us know what your challenges are in business, uh, and then see if we can maybe you know consult those questions a little bit go. later, and then maybe you know create another maybe a sequel or something like that. Right. Uh, to those, um, Josh, um, why did you? Uh, what what resonated with you and the four percent? Like with what we do with our work, what. Uh, because you know you see, you see a lot of different platforms. You contribute to a lot of different platforms. Yes. Um, what attracted you to four percent? Well, really, it's all about you know the people or the person behind it. To tell you the truth, and same thing with investing in a company. You know, a lot of people ask me, what's the number one thing you look for when investing into a company? And I say the person behind it. You know, number one, are they investing into that company themselves? Because if they're not even investing into it themselves, then why should you? Right. You know, are they spending a significant amount of time doing whatever it is that they're proposing to do? If the answer is yes, then it's probably a good candidate. So what drew me to the 4% is uh, whenever we met, I believe it was at uh, Tech Academics, which, yeah. um, which you know, I'm thankful to be able to teach there now. One of the things that stood, me, or, you know, stood apart was the integrity. You, know, you have three things, and there's three things that not only that you have, but I look for in a good business partner. Is I look for high integrity, I look for high intellect, and I look for... Um, should we tell them the third one? What do you think? Or should we save that for the last one? High energy. We'll go ahead and tell you. So high energy, high intellect, and high integrity. If you have any one of those three things missing, 
then it throws everything off askew. So for instance, if they have really high energy and high intellect, but they don't have high integrity, that's really bad because then you have somebody working against you that's really smart yep. and has a bunch of energy. <laughs> uh, dangerous. Uh, yeah, but if they, if, they're really, if they have a lot of energy and a lot of, uh, sorry, if they have a lot of integrity and a lot of intellect but low energy, that doesn't really mean much. Yeah. Same thing with vice versa. So what really attracted to me to the 4% is your uh, genuine ability to care for people and to simplify it into its most simple um, you know, process because Albert Einstein said that if you can't explain something simply, then you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know? And so uh, Steve Jobs also said that simple can be harder than complex. So you know, I just resonated with the knowledge you had, the strategies, the execution. You know, I, I resonated with uh, the way that you ran things and your, your intellect and integrity, et cetera. And then and through your products in the 4%, you, know, it just, you can see that reflection because it's all a reflection of each other. And so that is what drew me to it because I knew that you genuinely had the, the care to help people. And like you said, if you take care of people, the money takes care of itself, always. right? Always, always. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Hey, everybody, so uh, look, I'm gonna tell you like this. Uh, you're watching this, hopefully, I've got, I've got a, a full page of notes here. You know, Josh, I take notes all the time, especially <laughs> when I talk to guys like yourself. Um, hopefully, you, you've got an idea or two. I always say this one thing, you know, one idea is all you need sometimes to become a millionaire. You know, one idea is, is, is what can help you go from where you are to where you really want to be. One idea that, that you act on, right? Um, if you are watching this, if you're a member of the 4%, if you have a, an account with the 4%, even if it's a free account, um, watch for Josh's stuff inside of the marketplace. We've got some really, really cool training from Josh, both uh, free and premium level trainings. Uh, if you want to learn more about SEO, okay, you can find that information inside the 4%. Uh, if you're not a member of the 4%, look, what you waiting for? You know, there's two, peop- two groups of people. You know, there, there are people that compete and then there are people that dominate. That's pretty much it, you know. And, uh, and I say, you know, when, I, when I'm talking to people, I say, look, it's, it's really, really simple. Do you want to be the most powerful, you know, most influential and most dominant figure in your business and life? And if you said yes, that's exactly why we created 4% is to help you become that. And if you said no, we're definitely not the right place for you because we're going to push you because it's the next level. It's the four percenters that make things happen and make the economies go around. Okay? Look, I hope you appreciate this episode. Thank you very much for tuning in. Josh, thank you, brother. Thank you very much. I appreciate you too. Uh, and uh, hey, make today awesome. Make your life awesome. Decide that you're going to be that four percenter. It's up to you. And if we can serve you, we're, gra- we're grateful to be able to do that. Okay? Until next time, everybody, have a great day. Appreciate you. Be blessed and I'll talk to you next time.